Rage over exaggerated trailer voice. Last time on Questing with Kittens. After suffering the indignities of clam fishing, our fearless hero was tasked with digging around inside bear carcasses. Forced to comply by his cruel gnomish master, with Kittens uncovered a sinister plot to turn the ravenous hungry bears of Darkshore into green glowy ravenous hungry bears of Darkshore. He freed the bears, slew a legion of demons, and blew up their chemistry set, which they found most upsetting. Upon returning to the town of Lebleble, he was asked to locate yet more bears and rescue the restless spirit of an Oberdeen survivor's wife by clawing her face off? Okay. Confused yet determined, with kittens got on the wrong night saber, and our adventure continues. Okay. So while we're here, we might as well also slay a few of those spirits, cause just in case the flame doesn't work. There's that cyclone in the center of the zone that you saw in the Trees of Woe video, and if you haven't, then I'd suggest you go look at the Zone Tours series playlist that I've got. I'll show you that. Ah, there we go. Extinguish the flame. Sorted. And apparently we annoyed a few people. It's quite convenient. Brings the people that I have to slaughter right to me. These are not exactly what I'd call challenging. A little higher level, but we still out-level them by two, so we're still dealing with green mobs. Curse of Doom does a little bit of damage, but at the end of the day, you're not going to be fighting more than one or two at a time anyway. There's, I can't see any scenario where that would occur. I'm going to speed pretty much all of this up because there's not a lot to show. What we also have to do in this area is find that dude's wife and put her to rest for good. Is apparently trapped for some reason between this world and the next. It's pretty inconvenient. You have to wait in a white room for ages and they've got terrible, terrible home improvement magazines. Ugh. It's like the dentist from hell. Well, I am playing WoW, so it's not entirely surprising that you should say that. But really, you don't have to rub it in. I'm glad to see the claws and the mangling and the biting works pretty well on things that aren't entirely corporeal. It'd be rather inconvenient otherwise. Yes, I have played games where that is the case. I actually recall doing a dungeon in Dungeons and Dragons Online at level 6. It's like, suddenly wraiths! Oh, great! My sword doesn't seem to hit them. Need a bit of ghost touch or some magic in there. Ah, there you are. You're awfully depressed. I don't really know why she fights back. Like, I'm trying to rescue you. Stop being awkward. There we go. Okay, that's all sorted out. But the next quest is what I'm really impressed with. That was pretty cool. And it's kind of sad. Honestly, it's a little bit depressing. Which I like, because the atmosphere to this zone is important. What really matters is this next bit, because I think this is an absolutely fantastic little chain. It's got a lot of unique elements in it. Things that you wouldn't otherwise expect and you definitely didn't see in Vanilla WoW. A lot of creativity in terms of what could otherwise be a set of very boring quests spiced up by throwing a little bit of a wild card in on e each one. It's very cool. Okay, here we go. Heading over to the Withering Thicket. We're looking for Grimclaw, who apparently wandered off here. And it looks like he has. He's not looking all that well. He's a little bit of a flat bear. And so, okay, because these dryads and the druid of the... Is that druid of the claw? I don't know. Whatever. Yep, he's a little bit too injured. We can't move him, so we can do something about that. Apparently. Yes, there is, in fact. Now, this is neat. There's a little bit of weird redundancy in this quest, but it kind of makes sense in the context of who you're talking to. So it's like, oh, we, we can never condone violence, but in this case, we'll make an exception. Generic drop and pickup quest, but this is what's interesting. So allow me to explain what this is all about. In any other area, this would be generic kill and drop. So in other words, you kill the Moonstalkers, you get the Whiskers. You kill the Does, you get the Hair and stuff like that. But no, these are Dryads and Druids. They don't want you to kill the animals. That's not in their nature. So they provide you with information on how to get the items without killing these guys. And each one of these three different animals has to be approached differently. Now, I may possibly kill the animals a little bit, but we don't have to tell them that. Well, come on, if he's going to charge straight at me. 
So you can acquire these items by actually right-clicking on the animals instead of killing them, but in this case, the does are guarded by aggressive stags. Thankfully, we've only had to kill one of them, so we grabbed those. There are two others, however. If you read the quest text, you'd be aware of exactly what, and if you want to go back and pause it... Honestly, you should be doing that in the videos anyway if you're interested in it. I'm not going to leave it up for two minutes for people to read, and I'm not going to do some dumb voice acting either. It's not going to happen. It's entertaining the first couple of times, but really, it's a waste of time. So the point of this quest is that you've got to get the parts of the animals without killing them. But in the meantime, some ruins have been risen from the earth as a direct result of the cataclysm. And the Naga are here looking for something. Agents of Queen Ashara. That's not good. However, killing these guys is pointless. Or is it? If you read the quest text, what you would know, and indeed if you look at the quest tracker on the side there, is that... I'm not actually asked to kill six of these guys. I'm asked to raise six withered Ents. Now, the thing is, they can only be raised by killing these guys. It's an interesting twist, really, isn't it? Instead of just kill, it's like raise Ents to aid you. I suppose it, it does fit in with the lore of those guys. Like, well, we really don't like killing people, but I suppose if you raise Ents from their corpses, which seems incredibly morbid, then it's okay. Okay, weird night elf chick. You you just do whatever. I'm I'm fine. Just don't expect me to invite you to any parties or anything. Ugh. Nothing worse than weird hippie chicks. I can tell you that from experience. Okay. And a few of these dead scouts. We have a friend here by the looks of it. Or is he? Hopefully these mushrooms, I believe, can be picked up by multiple people, so it's all good. Now, there are those bears, but they seem a little bit hostile. Interesting. Oh, God. Yeah, you go away now. Now, I know we weren't supposed to kill them, but really, it is trying to eat my face, and I prefer that wasn't happening. Now, we're asked to gather bear fur, but it's not dropping. So, what do we do? Well, you'll find out. If you read the quest text, you'll know exactly what we have to do. If you didn't, well, I'll show you in due time. Honestly, it's just so neat. I want to save it. That and your timing has to be particularly good here in order to actually get the fur in the first place. Just cutting out a little bit of laggy footage there. So here's what you do. There you go, you raise an Ent and it goes off to attack other guys for you. It's entirely pointless, but it's entertaining. It makes the quest a little bit more interesting. You don't need it. I mean, I already out-level these guys. I could take three or four at once without any issue. But it's kind of neat to have your own little army of Ents running around killing things. They do have only a set aggro radius, though, so it's not all that helpful. Those guys already aggroed this one. Now, you'll have seen in the older Wargan videos, if you invite them and it's grey, you'll get the credit anyway. Unfortunately, this guy, quite frankly, doesn't look like he wants to cooperate. Which is pretty annoying, to be fair. Like, yes, I would like you as a fellow beta tester to sit here for five minutes waiting for a respawn because I'm too much of a douchebag to actually invite you to my group. Wonderful. Great. Well, I'm certainly not helping him out. In the meantime, it might be worth us going and getting the rest of those Ents, since we've got to collect four. I'm just sitting there growling at him. You can tell. I'm staring daggers. Not impressed. We've seen people like that before, and indeed with the guy who was actually actively killing quest givers in that starting village for no reason whatsoever. And as a result, stopping people from properly testing, I have to wonder sometimes about the caliber of some of the people that got invited to the beta, and whether or not they should have their beta access revoked as a result of behavior that impedes proper testing. I'm not saying that everyone who plays the beta has to test, test, test 100% of the time. I mean, you know I don't. Uh, I provide feedback in the form of videos, and I do submissions after the quests and the videos are done. I'll go through and say, well, this was okay, this wasn't. And I am like to think I do a bit of testing here and there. But the people that actively get in your way, I don't think they should be in the beta at all. And I think they should have their access revoked if they continue with that kind of behavior. But hey, it's not my beta. That's all up to Blizzard. Excellent, she's finally respawned. Do we have any priests around to ninja the kill? No? Excellent, great. Let's kill her. We don't need the ends. That's actually something I would suggest. 
how about we make this more of an elite where you actually do need the Ents? Have the Ents follow you as opposed to just stand around? And kind of like the quest back of the Worgen starting zone where you had to attack an elite Dark Ranger with a pack of dogs. Why don't we just have the Ents tank it? Make them generate a ton of threat so you're not worried. Collect six Ents, go in there and make it a mini boss battle. That would just be so much more entertaining and engaging. Now, we've got to figure out how to get the fur off a bear. An angry, hungry bear, no less. Well, what we have to do is we have to wait for them to try and catch a fish. And while they're eating, they become neutral, at which point we can take a tuft of their fur. And then run the hell away before they notice. They don't like that at all. Ah, God! Pouncing bears! Get it away! Oh, Jesus. More bears. Covered in bears. Why the bears everywhere? <laughs> yeah, this isn't going to end well. That's a lot of bears. There's no way around here. And my speed upgrade doesn't work at all in the water. <laughs> Get them away. Please go neutral. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, I think we can safely say we're pretty dead. Can't even get on there. Oh, no. Oh, no. This quest. Seriously. Covered in bears. Now, what is that sound I hear in the background? Oh, yes. It's 500 angry YouTube commenter saying, Why aren't you in stealth, Total Biscuit, you noob? Well, that's true, but... Bear in mind that a lot of the classes that come here aren't going to be able to go into stealth, so how about I show you the way the quest's supposed to go, as opposed to just cheesing it with an ability, eh? Sounds reasonable. It kind of defeats the point of the exercise if the timing isn't really required, because you can just stand there in stealth, wait for them to go yellow, and then steal their fur. Aha! See if we can grab him before he finishes his little meal. Can't imagine there'll be all that many fish in these rapids, admittedly, but they seem to be doing a good job catching him. This is just so unique. I'm a big fan. In vanilla, this would have just been killed the bear, take the bear fur. More of this, please. This is an example of something I talked about on the Blue Please podcast on Friday, whenever the hell that was. It was a few days ago now. Whenever you're watching this video, just head over to my website. There's a link there, and you can listen to that in full. And I was talking about the idea of spicing up quests. So taking something that is otherwise generic and turning it into something really interesting. And this is a perfect example of how to do that. Nobody's saying abandon the five Ds model, i.e. defend, drop, discover, destroy, and deliver. That's always going to be there in an MMO. You can't deviate from that. It's kind of like the Holy Trinity, you know, tank, DPS, healer. It's just a core part of the mechanics of a game like this. You can't get away from it. But what you can do is you can add a little bit of icing. You can put a bit of spice in there. Heartily, heartily approve of this particular quest series. Now, if we could just get rid of the Naga, that would be very nice indeed. Will you quit it? It's not going to get you anywhere. Yes, I did realize that I've been running around this entire time without thorns on. Oh no, I'm doing three less damage. Quite. Now, can someone please explain why the entire animal kingdom around here is homicidal? I'm a druid. I'm doing nice things, really. I only killed a couple of the bears. And to be fair, that was only in self-defense. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Okay. We're looking for Moonstalkers. Now, in this case, we can't take it from the guys who are stalking. We need the non-stalky stalkers. And where do we find them? Under the tree, asleep. Now, if we can just sneak in there and not get eaten by them... If we're really quick, we can grab all three. No, no, it's fine. You go back to sleep. Don't, don't get up. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Oh, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my face. And they have a hard disable. Come on. Really? Look at that stun. That's crazy. Ugh. I wasn't a druid. I'd be dead by now. Spam the heels. Ignore the pushback. Please go away now. Thankfully, feral swiftness will get me the hell out of here. They really don't like that, do they? This is a hostile place. I would not recommend taking your kids here. Here we go. Okay. Here, take the foul smelling mushrooms and don't tell me what you're going to do with them. I'm not here to judge. Yes, please tell me you got these without... Maybe. Maybe. Pay no attention to the rotting animal carcasses. It wasn't me, it was the... 
yeah, it was the Naga. Yes, absolutely, the Naga. Hmm. I'm actually surprised that we've only done 100 quests by now, but there you go. Ah, the ritual bond. Breathe in the incense. I'm not into that kind of thing. I'm sorry. All of this hippie junk with your incense and your foul-smelling mushrooms. <laughs> Here's the best thing about this. This is something I did put feedback on. You can just see it right there, but you see the incense? It's the same bloody colour as the freaking plants around here. I couldn't actually see it. Is it in my inventory? No. Is it on my quest map? Yes, right here. I'm standing on top of it. But I just couldn't see the bloody thing. It's the same colour as my freaking shirt, for one thing. It's the same colour as all the shrubberies around here. I mean, could we just not make it bright pink? Puce? Cyan? Anything? Just not the same colour as the grass. Come on. Okay, let me fast forward to the point where the penny actually dropped. I'm such a dumbass. There we go. I don't really know if I want to breathe in the smoke to entice the visions of the great animal spirits. Yes, I'm sure. You know, suddenly I've got this craving for some Pringles. Maybe some salted peanuts. Or cornflakes. Right, it's great animal spirits. This is neat. Each of these gives you a buff that supposedly carries on all the way through Darkshore. So we get to choose one of them and only one. Now, this one gives you agility, this other guy over here gives you speed, and then the final one, the bear, gives you stamina, I believe. In terms of this, I'm going to take the movement speed one. I still don't know if it actually stacks with my current movement speed, but hey, movement's nice, I like movement, let's do that. Now, it's one of the things that you just can't get from items, so it seems to me that a unique buff would be better than just, hey, here's some plus agi that might not scale with your level. Okay. We'll have some delicious braces. Thank you very much. Wait a second. Did you just blow up that bear? I thought you were supposed to be the good guys, protecting the animal kingdom and all that nonsense. And then suddenly the rocks and the rubble and the earthquakes and the lightning strike. Where is the bear? Oh, he's run off. Okay. I'll forgive you. He's made a full recovery while I was tripping out. Very cool. Now, I'm sorry. Looks like I've exceeded my recommended daily allowance of crazy night elf drugs, so I can't take the incense again. It's very cool that you get a permanent choice right here, because as far as I'm aware, there's no way to get that back. Once you make that choice, that's it. Isn't it great that even at such a low level, they're actually giving you a choice that you can't go back on? Like, hey, Bunch of buffs. You have to choose between them. And once you do it, that is it. Pay attention. That's nice. Giving some level of decision and choice to the player that gives a consequence that they have to live with. Even if every consequence is positive, it's a different kind of positive. You know, speed is different to stamina is different to agility, obviously. It's good. I like that. More of that, please. Okay, I'll have a quick dash here. I have no idea if this is speeding me up or not, honestly. I know that's a pretty odd thing to say when I'm running the footage at 300%, but there you go. I don't believe I actually have to convince people within the game and the actual beta testers that, it, honestly, it gets better, really, after the buzz box, it does. Seriously. Ah, uh, the scarecrow. Well, at least we don't have any seagulls around here. There we go. Now I've actually unlocked another one as well. Now that is over to the area we went to. And level 15, wonderful. Now that unlocks the dungeon finder. What can we go to? We go to the dead mines. No, that's not the change, dead mines. Rage Fire Chasm and Wailing Caverns is also available, even though we're a little low for it. We also got Demoralizing, Roar, Growl. So that means bear form. Yes, indeed. And we also get access to our first glyph. It's a nice level up. I will show you the bear form in a future video. It'll probably be out today, honestly. I'll do a little short of it. It involves flying all the way back to Darnassus in order to train it. Blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. Now, this is really sad, actually. Even if it's Night Elf, it's really sad. The bear finally came back, and the guy died just as the bear got there. That is so depressing. It's great, though. That's good, engaging, and a little bit heart-wrenching storytelling. I'm happy with that. 
Mm. Shows a little bit of maturity to the storyline, which wasn't there otherwise. And he is not so happy about that, but at least we've put it to rest. And I do have to wonder if there's supposed to be some kind of cutscene there, or whether indeed he's not supposed to even realize she's standing there. Whatever the case, I'm very impressed, far more so than I was with the start of this zone. Some real engagement here, some good storylines, and it's told in a visual and enjoyable manner. So good on Blizzard. Let's have some more of that. My name's been Total Biscuit. This has been the second Dark Shore leveling series video, and I shall see you next time. It's dapper, isn't it? Hell yeah.